Hello, hello again. I'm so excited to be back here in the community and um, sharing about something that has really continued to come to the surface, not only in my own business, but in other people's businesses in the community on Facebook. Um, and I want to talk to you guys today about one of my favorite topics, and it is strengths-based branding. And I know that if you're in the Facebook community that several of you have gone ahead and purchased this book called Strengths Finders 2.0 by Tom Rath. I love this book. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about why and how this book has transformed how I do branding with my clients. But before I jump in, I want to let you know at the beginning of this video that um, I am offering two brand assessments You'll find out more details at the end of this video, but I want you to know so that you have a reason to stick around to the end. Um, because I think that this is really important. I, there are some places, specific places where people get really stuck when it comes to their branding and I want to help you get unstuck. And I'm going to give you some tips totally free today in this video, but um, even more so to dig into your own personal brand, it really helps to have someone come in and kind of help you sift through some of that stuff. So let's just get into strengths, brand strengths based branding and what it is and why I love it. So this is strengths finders 2.0. There is a one and a half hour test that comes with this book. There's a code. You take the test online. Um, it is really, really good. It's part of the Gallup poll. Um, it's well researched, well backed. Um, and I want you to know, like I have done Myers-Briggs, I have done Enneagram, I have done DISC profiles, I have done all kinds of personality assessments. I have a background in leadership, organizational theory, personality stuff. Um, I did that in college. And so it's something I really love. It's something that really interests me on a personal level, but I love how it has come full circle um, for branding and the reason why is because this book helps you understand and focus on your strengths instead of the areas where we tend to focus on, which is our, our areas of weakness or areas where we think we need work. And this is not something that is um, uncommon, right? I even talked about in the mindset series that we just wrapped up that negative thoughts are on repeat in our mind, like 80% of our thoughts are negative and 95% of them are on repeat, right? We're not having a lot of new, fresh thoughts. And a lot of that is because we're focused on, oh, I need to do better here. Oh, I need to work on this. Oh, I need to get up earlier. Oh, I need to exercise. Oh, I need to have more quiet time. And it, it ends up in this really negative cycle of shaming and discouragement. And none of that is actually benefiting you. And so what Strengths Finders does is one, it helps you identify what your top five strengths are. There's 30 some different strengths in here, but it, it doesn't give you the full list in order of like one through 30, here's your weakest point. It says, here's your top five. Now go and lean into those things. And it gives you something really specific to focus on and um, also helps you to understand the flip side of your strengths and where it can go sideways for you, um, how it lands on other people, like practically what does this look like in the workplace or in your home life and your relationships. And so it's very practical. It's an hour and a half of your life, maybe two hours if you read through some of the other, read through your results and some of the other things, but it's such a small investment in yourself, in your business um, that has for me, amazing return on investment and results in my business and my life, because I've, I've been able to make that profitable for me. And I'm going to talk to you about how we do that. And so um, the first way that it saves you money and helps you have way more momentum in your business is that understanding your strengths helps you almost completely cut out shiny object syndrome. If you haven't heard that term before, shiny object syndrome is like you're, you're doing your own thing, you're staying in your lane, and there's this peer in your industry, or maybe they're in a completely different industry, and they're having success, and it's really cool, and it's like, oh my gosh, like that is awesome. They are awesome. I want to do what they're doing and have that similar success. And then like, pew, it's like squirrel syndrome. And you're like off over here, trying to figure out what it is that they're doing and how you can do it too. And then in the middle of doing that, somebody else comes along and they're like shiny objects. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's cool. How do I do that? Or how do I incorporate that in my business? And so we're constantly wondering how they're doing what they're doing and being successful at it. And we end up losing momentum that we could have had from the get-go. 
And so understanding this concept will make all the difference for you when it comes to building out your brand that's gonna be a standout, captivating and converting brand. Um, embracing your strengths is really attractive. Leaning into what you're good at is very attractive. Um, when someone is forcing themselves to kind of put on a pair of shoes that doesn't fit and they're kind of clunky and they're, you know, flopping around, like it's like, those shoes don't fit. You should get a shoe that fits. Or when somebody wears a jacket and it's a little too big or a little too tight, it's like, it's less attractive when they're trying to put on somebody else's style, right? And I think we all kind of understand this intuitively, but we don't understand it when it comes to our brands because it feels like a creative space where we can become anything or anyone that we want to be. And there's this idea, especially in the online world, you can, you know, put out a perception of yourself that you can control and manipulate. And to some people, that's really encouraging. You can reinvent yourself. You can grow into something that you never thought was possible. But I want to challenge that thought. And I, I love the way Strengths Finders put it. And I'm just going to read it straight out of the book. I know I've read it out of this book to this community before. And I think it just has to be said again. Um, in this book, Tom Rath starts challenging that very concept of you can be anything that you want. And I've never really loved that, like, you're a pearl and the world is your oyster, go be whatever you want to be. Because in reality, people are wired certain ways. And to really go against that wiring feels like you're going against nature and it feels wrong. It doesn't feel good. And so people end up getting stuck. They feel lost. They are just spinning their wheels. And so I like that this addresses that issue, which is a real issue and says, you may not be able to be whatever you want to be, but you Actually, he says you cannot be anything you want to be, but you can be a whole lot more of what you already are. And for me, that's a very hopeful thought of, I don't have to try and fit into this square hole as a round peg. Like I can be who I am wired to be, who I'm created to be, and that's okay. And that when I lean into that, that's actually gonna be attractive. And when someone sees that and they're attracted to that, that starts helping to build something that we in the industry call your know, your like, and your trust factor. People get to know you, they start to like you, and then they come to trust you and what you have to say. And so one of the byproducts of understanding your strengths when it comes to your brand is that it automatically sets your position as an expert because who has ever been the go-to person for something in their family or their friend group, right? We all have that very techie friend um, who, in fact, yesterday, my best friend texted me and was like, hey, do you know how to do a split screen on Facebook Live, like interview style? And I was like, yep, do this, 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 and this. Like, I am a go-to person for that kind of thing. And for other things, like I have a friend who's very emotionally intelligent and just like so good at reading people. And I was like, I have this situation. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm feeling. And she would just totally spell it out for me, like what I was feeling and why I was feeling that way. And it was just like, how do you do that? And this is stuff that you don't have to spell out for people. Like it, it just kind of spills out. It's more caught than taught. Um, and people are smart. People pick up on these things and you become a go-to person in your community. But online, you might have to spell that out a little bit more, but understanding your strengths helps you to do that. This book gives you verbiage and words. Um, so you're not working so hard at wordsmithing um, your marketing or your visibility stuff. Um, this is why I really like starting with my clients at a strengths-based platform because it already sets the position. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm maybe an expert at because I've nurtured this. I've gotten some certifications in this. I have 10 years of experience in this. They've taken their strengths and they've They've honed it, they've mastered it, they've worked at it as a craft, and now they've positioned themselves as someone who can really help in this area or this area, but not these areas over here, these areas. These are my strengths, this is what I'm good at, and you can go to somebody else for support for those other things. Um, and so um, let me go back through my notes here because I had some really good things I wanted to make sure you guys got today. Um, so. You know, a lot of people are looking for their X factor, right, in their industry. And so you might say like, well, yeah, if I'm working in a copywriting industry, like obviously I'm gonna be good with words and so is everybody else gonna be good with words. How do I set myself apart? 
Well, I think the first thing to understand is that your strengths are not the same thing as your personality. Um, and your strengths are not the same thing as your skill sets. So the way strengths work um, is, for example, I use my number one strength per strengths finders, right? My number one strength is that I'm a learner. I am constantly learning. It's a very intuitive and natural thing for me to be like learning um, how something works or kind of breaking it apart in my mind as I'm enjoying watching it. This happens in movies. Like, I wonder how they did that scene. I wonder how they did, you know, that shot. Um, and so as I'm learning and I'm thinking about things or I'm, I'm obsessed with um, courses and books, and um, this can also be a weakness. But the point here is that I'm a branding person. I am a coach who is a student of my clients. I'm a student of what is going on there. And another strength of mine is individualization. This is not something that every coach comes to the table with. Some coaches learn a method and they teach that method over and over and over and over. But I don't believe in cookie cutter businesses because I think everyone has different strengths. And I think that we need to have custom solutions. We can follow models and principles, but ultimately a lot of times custom solutions are required because of the, the dreams and visions that we have in our minds and in our hearts. So my learning strength and my individualization strength really help set me apart as the kind of coach that I'm going to be. Um, and I, I like using the idea of like um, insurance people or realtors or car salesmen. These are people that are on in every community, on every block. And so it's really hard to figure out like, how do I stand out from the crowd in an industry where like my job's to sell cars? The next guy's trying to sell a car too. What sets me apart? Well, maybe your brokerage, maybe they already have their branding or maybe the dealership, maybe it's Mercedes, maybe it's Toyota. Um, those things will, will be one of the things that sets you apart. But even more so within your own dealership or within your own brokerage, how do you set yourself apart? Um, that comes down to your strengths, your personality, your values, and your visuals, right? So these are the things when combined help you to develop a strengths-based brand. And I'll say those things again. It is your strengths. It is your um, personality, it's your values and your visuals. And when we get really clear on those things, um, it really starts to come together very easily. Um, most people find knowing and articulating their personality to be very easy. It's very obvious, like I'm really loud and outgoing or I'm rather introverted and shy. Um, but strengths is a very practical, objective thing that you can get your hands around for a very small investment. This book is $13 and that includes the test, right? So this is a very small first investment in yourself, in your business, in your career, whether you're, you know, doing your own thing, um, like an online business, or you're part of something like a brokerage, like a realtor or something like that. Um, your, your visual, your, sorry, your values are things that you may not be able to spout off the top of your head, but with, you know, maybe an hour of sitting down and thinking like, I really value community. I really value honesty, integrity, authenticity. And you can just start running down a list and then say like, this would probably be my number one. This would probably be my number two. This is my number three. And I really want to highlight these three values um, as something that sets me apart in the industry. So, you know, already you've got your personality, your strengths and your values um, squared away. But the place where people start to get stuck then is in their visuals. How do they come up with these visuals that represent well at a glance, their strengths, their personality, and their values? And so that's why I want to offer the brand assessment regarding the visuals, regarding the brand, um, strengths-based branding. Um, if you have that or if you don't have that yet, that's okay. Um, but this is something that I really find a lot of my clients who are coming to me initially, they're really stuck on like, how do I create this visual without copycatting or trolling somebody else? Um, and so we will sit down and we will start to, to dialogue about the strengths, the values, the personality, and then that um, comes together in the visuals. And so one of the things to help you guys, because I know so many in this community are just getting started. And one thing that I was working on last week was um, brand brand boards, things that I had put together for clients last year, um, their logos, their overall brand visuals, their brand boards, but wanted to do some snapshots so I could share about them because I've done really terrible at sharing about the brands that I've worked with. 
and they're amazing brands and I want to spotlight them. So I was putting together some of these visuals for them, snapshots of the brands. And I was like, this is really fun. I really enjoy this. I think that the community, when it comes to branding and their visuals, would really get a lot out of creating a mood board. So I wanted to share about a mood board challenge that I would like to do next week, but I want to make sure this is something you guys are interested in. I don't want to just do this mood board challenge if you're like, that's not really helpful, Brittany. But mood boards really help you stay on track, right? So you're not constantly playing with different fonts or different colors. It's like, nope, these are my colors. I've already decided like this is what I'm going to do at least for the next 90 days, maybe 180 days, like six months, right? And see if it takes, see if you need to tweak it at all. Um, but this is consistency builds authority and expertise. And so having consistent visuals is really important and really helpful. So having a mood board to kind of guide you as you continue to develop your brand um, with your programs, your packages, your services is, is really helpful. If that's interesting to you, drop a yes. Love to do the mood board challenge, mood, mood board challenge, please. Um, and that way I will get some of the materials together for next week and um, we can knock that out. And so at that point, you will have some tools and resources to help you on your own, develop your own brand because a lot of a lot of people start out DIY. They can't afford to work with a coach. They can't afford to work with a designer and they just need something to get them started, helping them to do some market research and, and figure out really where they want to hone in on their niche. So um, so yeah, that, that's the one thing I wanted to talk to you about was the mood board challenge. If that's interesting to you, let me know. And number two, brand assessments. If you are interested in a brand assessment, you've got some pieces together, but they're not really coming together well, um, or it just isn't feeling like you. And it's like, Ugh, I like this idea, but it feels like a baggy coat <laughs> when I try to put it on online. Um, let's talk about why it's feeling that way. So I have room in my calendar for two slots. If you're interested in that, shoot me a DM. Um, and on the honor system, I will select those who are first come first serve. So let me know um, if that's you shoot me a DM if you're interested in that. And that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope, hope, hope that you guys find this information helpful, valuable, um, supportive and helping you to take small next steps in your business. And um, if there's something around branding that you have a question about, please let me know. I would love to help answer that for you. And um, if you think that this community is helpful, I would love for you to invite your friends to join as well. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys later. Bye.